So Connie's going to play it all the way through, so that we'll know what it is. And um, the hymn, the sequence hymn before the gospel is familiar, but um, it's only two lines long. We'll sing it once in Latin, once in English, and then once in Latin. Okay. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Look here. Today I've set before you life and what's good versus death and what's wrong. If you obey the Lord your God's commandments that I'm commanding you right now by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments, his regulations, and his case laws, and you will live and thrive. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and so are misled, worshiping other gods and serving them, I'm telling you right now that you will definitely die. You will not prolong your life on the fertile land that you are crossing the Jordan River to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth as my witnesses against you right now. I have set life and death, blessing and curse before you. <laughs> now choose life so that you and your descendants will live by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by clinging to him. That's how you will survive and live long on the fertile land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today, Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8. Let's read it responsibly by whole verse. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Who never do anything wrong, but always walk in his ways. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. Keep your statutes. Do not hurt me. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I couldn't talk to you like spiritual people, but like unspiritual people, like babies in Christ. I gave you milk to drink instead of solid food because you weren't up to it yet. Now, you are still not up to it because you're still unspiritual. When jealousy and fighting exist between you, aren't you unspiritual and living by human standards? When someone says, I belong to Paul, and someone else says, I belong to Apollos, aren't you acting like people without the spirit? After all, what is Apollos? What is Paul? They are servants who helped you believe. Each one had a role given to them by the Lord. I planted, Apollos watered, but God made it grow. Because of this, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. But, only, but the only one who is anything is God who makes it grow. The one who plants and the one who's, who waters work together. But each one will receive their own reward for their own labor. We are God's co-workers, and you are God's field, God's building. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. You have heard that it was said to those who lived long ago, don't commit murder, and all who commit murder will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with their brother or sister will be in danger of judgment. If they say to their brother or sister, you idiot, they will be in danger of being condemned by the governing council. And if they say, you fool, they will be in danger of fiery hell. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and they remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift at the altar and go. First, make things right with your brother or sister and then come back and offer your gift. Be sure to make friends quickly with your opponents while you are with them on the way to court. Otherwise, they will haul you before the judge. The judge will turn you over to the officer of the court and you will be thrown into prison. I say to you in all seriousness that you won't get out of there until you've paid the very last penny. You have heard that it was said, don't commit adultery. But I say to you, that every man who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to fall into sin, tear it out and throw it away. It's better that you lose a part of your body than your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to fall into sin, chop it off and throw it away. It's better that you lose a part of your body than, the, than your whole body go to hell. It was said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a divorce certificate. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual unfaithfulness, forces her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those who lived long ago, don't make a false solemn pledge but you should follow through on what you have pledged to the Lord. But I say to you that you must not pledge at all. You must not pledge by heaven because it's God's throne. You must not pledge by the earth because it's God's footstool. You must not pledge by Jerusalem because it's the city of the great king. And you must not pledge by your head because you can't turn one hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. With words from my mouth and meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. I have a large extended family with about 20 first cousins, and Lord only knows how many once removed and second cousins that I have at this point. However, it has been my privilege to grow up knowing a lot of people and being able over time to see how their lives are progressing because of the choices they and their parents made. I have so many relatives that I feel I can use one of them as sermon and pretty well guarantee his anonymity. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no chance here. <laughs> One of my cousins studied to be a civil engineer because he had that sort of mind where once you calculate properly, you can build something to stand forever. But then he lost his wife to cancer, and in the process, he found Jesus. As anyone might imagine, the kind of church he prefers sort of fits that civil engineering mindset. If you follow the rules and make the right calculations to do the right things and believe the right things, then you will go to heaven. And as a result, when his sister was dying of cancer, 
He came to her bedside to be sure that she believed the right thing to do, so that one day she would meet, he would meet her. It turned out she did. But he told her at that time that their father, who didn't believe, probably was not evil. And reviewing our portion of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, I say with some certainty that my cousin is like the Christians in point, who received the beginning tablet of the faith by some seed planting pastor like Paul, and that seed may have been watered by other pastors, but it has yet to grow into what it could be. If such a Christian as my cousin were to encounter a pastor like Jesus, as Jesus is portrayed in Matthew today, he might jump start, he might jump start growth out of just sheer <laughs> This is what Matthew says with his words. You have heard it said in those ancient times, shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with your brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the fire of hell. I think my cousin bound to the letter of the law would be required at least to go beyond that law and consider his attitude as something that might be modified. Jesus goes, uh, uses the threat of the fire of hell to recommend that people dissolve their anger, and it is the implied cause of murder and to seek reconciliation before they dare worship in the temple. Jesus also suggests that the commandment demands uh, that everyone avoid adultery, and one who should go further should avoid the step leading to adultery, and that would be lust and the private admiring of someone's physique. Jesus also attacks the need for swearing an oath, saying that this is only necessary because we lie. <laughs> and therefore, we should stop lying. <laughs> Why, we might ask, is Matthew so interested in making the Ten Commandments harder? What is Matthew doing here? Well, there is an answer. He is defending Jesus to his fellow Jews who claimed that Jesus was trying to abolish the law. And Matthew is trying to show here that Jesus was fulfilling the law. Jesus does this in this passage by encouraging people to examine the cause of breaking any of the Ten Commandments and root out the cause before they actually break the law. However, without a pastor to teach my cousin about the background of this passage, a new Christian like my cousin might be tempted just to make a harder set of rules than he must follow. What is lacking in Matthew's passage is a reasonable method by which to remove that anger and that lust and ultimately the habit of lying, which underpins the necessity for the commandments. We have to look even further back in time, not Paul's era and not Matthew's, to find the help about how to do this. And oddly enough, we find it way back in the Old Testament and Deuteronomy, which might be the last place to look. <laughs> Here's the passage from the NRSV translation. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God by loving God, 
the Lord your God and walking in God's ways and observing his commandments. Then you shall live and become numerous and the Lord will bless you in the land you are entering. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, I declare to you today that you shall perish. Did any of you catch the piece of information that might make doing what Jesus suggests possible? Where's the key? I think the key is this, by loving the Lord your God. This is what I think is missing from my cousin's approach to Christianity. It is also missing, at least from the passage of Matthew, from this passage of Matthew, though I don't think it's missing from the whole gospel. It is by love of God that we find the power to walk in God's ways. In fact, I would go so far to say this by loving God that God grants us the power of love in our lives. And out of that love, we find a way to love our brother and our sister. This is how we can replace our anger with love and reconciliation as Jesus in Matthew's gospel recommends. This is how we avoid being obsessed with anything like lust or lying or any other state that would draw us away from godly ways. We do so by loving God. So, even if we love God and walk in God's ways, we are going to get sidetracked. We will resist evil, but still, we will fall into sin. So, while we may not murder, there will be definite moments when we wish we could. <laughs> and while we may not commit adultery, there may be moments when we wish we could. <laughs> and while we may never formally swear falsely, there are moments when we lie just because it's convenient. <laughs> How fast we walk out of those dead end, sin filled alleys depends not so much on our fear of God's reprisal, the death of the fire of hell, which is what I guess my cousin fears. Instead, it will largely depend on how miserable we feel about not loving God and not feeling God's love at work within us. The good news is that, not mentioned in our reading today, it is the restoration of God which is always possible. To paraphrase our baptism covenant, we persevere in resisting evil, and whenever we fall into sin, we repent and return to the Lord. I just love the glory of the Lord. <laughs> it's not possible for us not to do it. Sin. Another piece of good news is that more often we resist evil, fail, and repent, the better we get at resisting. And also, we grow in our gratitude for our forgiveness. And therefore, loving God comes more easily. And forgiving one another comes more easily. And thus, lust and anger and lying dissipate over time, though they never dissipate. Continue our worship with the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, life from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
He got the man and gave of one being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. In the have you. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped in the world. He has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. Life of the world of the time. Amen. Prayers of the people. Happy are they who walk in the law of the Lord. So let us come before the Lord saying, Righteous God, direct our ways. Lord our God, bless your church. May those who plant and those who water <clears throat> recognize their common purpose. Give abundant growth where your church labors faithfully. We pray especially for those who lead our church. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Kim, our bishop, Gary, our rector, and Nadine, our deacon. Righteous God, direct our policies. Lord our God, bless the people of this and every nation. Draw nations and leaders to choose the ways that promote life and not death. We pray especially for our nation's civic leaders, for Joseph, our president, Jared, our governor, our legislative bodies, and our courts. Righteous God, Lord, our God, bless this planet, your very footstool. Give us the wisdom and will to allow the earth to prosper as you have intended, naturally bringing forth growth and prosperity. Righteous God, Lord our God, bless our city. Give us the things we need to live together in relationship with you. Make them happy as they seek you with all their hearts. Righteous God, Lord our God, bless the sick and the struggling. May they find life in relationship with you. Make them happy as they seek you with all their hearts. We especially pray for those in our lives who are suffering and in need of healing. Righteous God. Direct our prayers. Lord our God, bless the dying and the dead. May they find peace and comfort at the foot of your heavenly throne. Righteous God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and the unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done. We have not loved you at all. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have truly sought to be humble. 
where the same of you is by the That first of you is to be the events that we made by the new building and block the buildings. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Talking about <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. Those of you who are in this space and um, and online, um, first I want to say thank you, Mary, for preaching and dealing with those lessons that I didn't have to deal with. <laughs> uh, that that was great. Although after this service, I get to deal with troubling Paul. Um, all of those, uh, some of that stuff in the New Testament that. Paul wrote or were attributed to Paul. So that is what will happen to the Faith Forum at 9.15. So come back after you go to coffee hour or after you go and get your cup of coffee. Come back at 9.15 for um, continuation of our difficult books of the Bible conversation. And then next week, Bishop Epting will bring it uh, to a fitting conclusion with the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And how do we understand that one, which should be a lot of fun. Um, as I mentioned in my uh, midweek moment, um, I am talking with the vestry and scheduling a sabbatical for the summer of 24. Um, that's what I'm looking at. And if and, and I, I covet your um, thoughts and ideas um, about that. And so next week after this service, before the, um, before the faith forum, um, we'll have a little chat. I'll probably just be at one of the tables in the other room. And so we can have a chat about what I'm thinking about and where that will have some impact on Good Shepherd. Um, and then lastly, uh, in terms of announcements, Ash Wednesday is a week from Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Next week is, is the last Sunday of Epiphany. So week from Wednesday, the 22nd, Ash Wednesday services at seven and noon only, no evening service um, next, next week this year. So, um, are there birthdays or anniversaries? I spoke with Mike Marfia yesterday, and he asked me to mention to folks that last Wednesday was his and Sally's 53rd wedding anniversary. So he asked me to mention them. So we are happy for, for that milestone in their lives. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord.
We're still having some technical difficulties. Sorry. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of... <clears throat> sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for, <clears throat> for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, 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 and and Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us in the sacrament of his body. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you. 